What is going on everybody? It's your boy Kramer back with another video from the poker van, the spooky poker van. So I'm at Will Rogers Beach State Park. Um, I had to look at my phone to double check where I am. I'm at. And uh, it is December 7th, 2022. So it is just this like 75 degree crazy perfect weather day here in SoCal. Uh, that's Southern California if you're not familiar. Um, I'm by Santa Monica. But I'm just at a, a beach down, so it's like not quite as busy. But um, as you can see, we finally got like, we're closer to the ideal recording setup for like hand review and everything. Um, I do have the, the, the ocean right behind me. Pretty nice, right? So, um, yeah, so basically, as you can tell by the title, we're gonna be doing some hand review. Um, I've been playing some 50 and L um things have been going pretty well i had a really bad losing session yesterday well really bad is as in losing three buy-ins which definitely is not the worst thing uh ran a little bit bad um but what we're going to be doing today is doing some hand review from uh two days ago so um let's just get right into it uh if you wouldn't mind i would appreciate uh dropping a like real quick and uh let's take a look at these hands all right so the first thing we're gonna be looking at is um we've got aces on the button so um i know i don't have hud stats on these guys uh that you can see but uh generally speaking the way that people play at 50 and l is um in such a manner that uh you know they're going to be calling and like making more plays than uh say below 50 and l that's what i found is that people play you know a lot more their plays make a lot more sense and they're also just willing to um you know take lines and just bluff outright so um anyway what i found is um also in this specific spot uh cutoff versus button you're gonna have a lot more um bluffing from both sides so like i'm gonna have a lot more bluffs in my range and so is the cutoff so um this is important because uh this is a hand where i, I basically just call down and i end up being right and i don't even have like perfect logic it, it was just the main thing going through my head is that i'm going to make it look like i have like ace king or something and this guy's gonna go crazy and um yeah so like i said <laughs> i'm gonna have a lot of bluffs he's gonna have a lot of bluffs so so we see uh basically an amazing board for aces uh ace of clubs for the backdoor club draw and jack high board we're only losing to pocket jacks like he just um this guy nihilism just isn't going to have that many uh pocket threes pocket fours three four suited and we don't have to worry about like ace five suited because we have the ace of clubs so um obviously amazing board so when we see this really good board um the way that i approached this hand was be in my head i was thinking we have so much ace king ace queen ace 10 just like even ace five just so much junk and um there's just very little that this guy is going to connect with and um i just wanted to give him a chance to bluff when we have pretty much the stone cold nuts and so i bet really small um i think i bet like i don't know what that comes out to about a quarter um i think generally in this spot when people do have bigger hands at least pe the way people play at 50 and l is that they usually bet a little bit bigger trying to get called by things like pocket eights pocket nines pocket tens that's the standard logic and then the standard logic for bluffing and continuation betting is you just bet really small and just hope people fold out their junk. And so I was, you know, I was tuned into this reality. I thought that this was absolutely what was going to be going through the standard 50 nil player's head. And we got a check raise, which we're very happy to see. Like I said, if you think of the hands we're actually losing to, it's only pocket jacks. And to be honest, um, He's probably just not check raising pocket jacks here. If we do have ace king, um, or even ace king of clubs, he's probably just check calling. Uh, like ace king of clubs is the only hand he's like really worried about if he does have three jacks. So you have to you have to ask yourself like, what is he check raising for value here or protection? Um, you know, I don't think pocket queens is check raising because he's going to be um four betting that pre flop. Um, probably just trying to get it in versus the button's three betting range or at least four bet folding possibly and um it just doesn't make sense to like check raise big on this board i don't think uh with pocket queens specifically like i think you're just calling most of the time um like i said i can 
Like, I just think he's going to be four betting those way too often to for this hand to make sense for us to be beat here. So basically, in my head, I think this guy's just completely full of it. And we're just going to try to represent ace king. So this is actually a really bad turn card in the event that he does have, like, specifically queen jack. Because queen jack might check raise the flop. But once again, I'm just not really convinced that he's he's really repping much. Um, again, pocket queens, four betting preflop. Pocket jacks, definitely possible and he's like playing overplaying them um something like eight nine of clubs is also possible but in reality i just think that he just has a ton of air on this board and he's just going to try to over rep it um especially just given the initial thing i said about this hand which is that we are um button versus cutoff so um all these things going through my head um also with the nut flush draw i'm just absolutely not prepared to fold it is worth noting that um there are very few bad rivers. Um, we have we have ace king in our range, so a ten is not bad. So if he did have like pocket tens that he was like seriously overplaying or like jack ten or something, I'm just not that too that concerned. Um, also, the queen of clubs isn't that bad, also because um, it blocks like queen jack of clubs, king queen of clubs that he could be check raising with an actual bluff. So it's like in terms of actual value hands. Um, King 10 of clubs, King Jack of clubs, Jack 10 of clubs, King 10 of, I don't know if I said King 10 of clubs, but you know, the club combinations, but, um, in my mind, he just have like, has way more random air in his hand or in his, in his range, like, like eight, nine, uh, of spades. Um, even like queen 10 of spades, like just these random hands that decide to represent this board. And also the sizing, um, it just didn't make a lot of sense. If he does have a flush, um, I don't know if he's sizing this big. Um, you know, maybe he is, but uh, my my spidey sense was going off, and I just didn't I didn't believe him. Um, and obviously, this is another pretty bad card, but um, because of like hands like queen ten of spades, eight nine of spades. So honestly, um, pretty much one of the worst runouts possible. But um, at this point, um, he is going to shove. And we're getting incredible odds, and um, so it's like, also another thing too is that like, we we also have ace-king with the ace of clubs in our range, and his his line just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. The thing is though, is like, honestly, I don't know what we're beating, and it didn't occur to me to like, think of hands that we are beating. Um, the things that went through my mind were the fact that we're getting incredible odds, we're getting, uh, what is it, four to one. And I just thought that he was going to be over bluffing this board. And once again, I don't know what hands I can beat. Um, so I'm kind of just going with the fact that we have great odds and um, his line just doesn't make a ton of sense. So, you know, you guys can tell me if you think this is like a stupid call or something. I decided to call um, just because his line didn't make a ton of sense and we had a really good odds. He ended up having um, King 10 of spades. So this is one of the hands like... I mentioned on the flop that might be check raising. So king 10 of spades. Well, I didn't mention this. I said eight, nine of spades. But king 10 of spades, king queen of sp spades, queen jack of spades. Um, these kinds of hands are definitely in his range and his check raising uh, range on the flop. But, um, you know, you guys can let me know what you think. Do you think this was a bad call? Um, I, <laughs> like I said, the only thing that the really thing that the thing that guided me through this hand the most was just the fact that we have so much air in our range as the button versus the cutoff. And um, so did he. And because of that, um, I want to call with, um, you know, just even the middle part of our range, especially with such good odds. So let me know what you guys think about that one. OK, so now we're going to be looking at another hand on the button. Honestly, I don't remember how this but or how this hand plays out, so we're going to be kind of playing it together, kind of live here. I'm just going to let you know what I think as I go through. Um, I think Jax is a slam dunk three bet, obviously. So going about three x sizing, um, very standard, and we get a call. So this is definitely not the worst board, not the best board. Um, things like ace queen are definitely in his range. Uh, King queen suited, uh, even pocket tens. But also, I'm thinking, you know, pocket eights, pocket nines, um, jack ten, king ten, ace ten, suited. Um, we're ahead of, like, a ton of hands, but I'm not thrilled about, like, getting more money in this pot. 
So I don't mind a check back. Also, I think it's good to check back your, your good hand sometimes because um, when you check back this board, it just makes you look really weak, like you have maybe ace king or ace jack. And I think people are more likely to bluff, so I think you can um, just kind of call with jacks more profitably. Um, and then I'm actually really happy to see the 10, of course. Um, this is a good bluff card. Um, in, you know, in theory, if you're playing really good players, this probably isn't a good bluff card. But I think at 50 and L, this is a card that people are going to use to bluff a lot. Um, but the interesting thing is that he's really not rep. This bet to me personally just does not represent much. Um, I think if he's making this bet, he's saying he has like pocket nines or something. Um, I think a 10 is betting more. I think a like King Jack of Hearts is betting more. I think Ace Queen is betting more. Um, I don't know what hands are really betting a quarter pot here other than something like pocket eights, pocket nines. That's what makes perfect sense to me. So I'm feeling extremely comfortable calling and using my jacks as a bluff catcher. And then we just see a gigantic brick on the river. And I'm pretty much prepared to call almost any size. The only thing that I, I can really think of is that like he bet really small with like quads. But even then, I think he's going to be betting more. Um, so at this point, I think there's nothing to do. I mean, we could even consider like clicking it back for value, to be honest. Uh, but I'm obviously never folding. Um, yeah, half half pot size. He could be, I don't know what, again, this line doesn't make a ton of sense. I think a queen is betting more on the turn. I think a 10 is betting more on both streets. Um, I think he just has so many bluffs in his range. Again, things like eights or nines that might be like randomly turning their hand into a bluff now. Um, I don't I don't remember what he has, but I think this is just a slam dunk call and we're probably getting value out of um, worse hands. And it's not surprising to see that he just has total air. Um, again, his line makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, if he was value betting the turn, he would be betting more. Value betting the river, probably betting more. I mean, his, his river bet isn't bad if he did have a queen or something, but just that, that turn bet, like, if I do have, okay, let, you know, let's think about it. If, if he has ace queen, no heart, and I could have, um, ace jack of hearts or ace king of hearts, this turn bet is just never making any sense. Um, he's going to want to charge those hands. He doesn't want to get drawn out on. What if I do have something like eight, nine of hearts? Um, he's going to want to charge those. Um, like it, yeah, just none of this makes any sense to me. Um, that turn bet is just so weak. And when we induce um, bluffs by checking the flop back with our jacks, I think this is just a slam dunk call, like I said. And we got a ton of value out of uh, deuce three of diamonds, which also is just like such a horrible, like I wouldn't even open that call, let alone op open that hand, let alone call a three bet. So yeah, a very interesting play from this guy. All right, so now we're going to be looking at another hand. Um, this is going to be, once again, another another button hand, which I, I did not intend to do all of this. But um, I do remember this hand, and I do remember I played it very badly, very poorly. And while I was playing the hand, I was thinking to myself, you know, this... All I was thinking to myself is that uh, I'm not really thrilled with how I... I'm not happy to get it in. And I did it anyway, and this was the result. So... Uh, King five suited, definitely a totally fine open on the button, in my opinion, especially against this weaker player pool at 15 L. Um, so obviously flopping two pair, we're pretty happy about that. Um, but when we get check raised, so, I mean, I want you guys to like, you know, consider, consider what hands are check raising here. Okay. Obviously six, seven of spades might be check raising. Um, but also maybe not because, um, I gave them, I gave six, seven of spades a pretty decent price and we are, you know, uncapped. Um, I think a lot of times six, seven of spades is like calling. Um, and then what, what are his other, like King X of spades might check raise, but also might not because, um, once again, we are uncapped. We could have ace queen of spades. If he does have, um, King X of spades, um, we could have a set, we could have aces. So, um, in general, um, with top and bottom here against the small blinds calling range, I'm actually just like not at all thrilled to uh, get it in. And so when we get, so like, I don't mind that we three bet the flop, um, basically trying to get it in versus like five, eight or something. But like, when I look at, when I look at the small blinds calling range, what is their small, 
what is the small blinds calling range? You know, you guys can tell me. Um, the worst of their range is going to be King X of Spades. What is the best of their range? Pocket fives, pocket eights, king eight. So, I mean, and also, like, what hands are more so in their range when they're calling from the small blind? So, um, is five eight suited or unsuited calling from the small blind? Probably not. Is pocket fives calling from the small blind? Absolutely. Is pocket eights? Absolutely. Is a uh, king eight? Uh, it's more likely than eight five. So, in general, I'm not thrilled about getting it in on this board. The only really hand that the hand that might be doing this that we're ahead of is like six seven of spades, maybe king x of spades, like king jack of spades. But I don't. I just don't think those hands are check raising as often as um you know sets or uh you know specifically king eight. Um, and once again, like eight five would check raise, but eight five is just not um uh in their calling range very often. So. As I was going through this hand, I'm I'm just like kicking myself, just saying like I shouldn't be getting it in, I shouldn't be getting it in, and then the run out is very clean for uh his his specific hand, king eight suited. So um once again, I'll I'll you know give it to you you know pass it to you guys you know what would you do in this spot? As I mentioned, as I was playing this hand, I was thinking this is not a good spot to get it in. Um, his value range is just like crushing our value range. He's he's got sets he's got um better two pairs he's got top pair and flush draw there's just like so many hands that we're just not happy about getting it in with so uh let me know what you guys think about this one all right so this is the last hand and this is another one of those another another hand from two days ago that i don't actually remember so we're just going to uh uh just be going through it together um so ace jack suited definitely an open and late position oh now i remember so here, here's the history with this guy. This guy, like two hands ago, um, we're playing blitz, but two hands ago, he, um, he like, he made some very aggressive plays and like started overbetting in these weird spots. And I felt pretty smart for this. This is why I included this. Um, this is another one of those boards. Uh, I mean, it's almost identical to the aces hand from the first hand. But when you see, you know, like jack high board and then like two low cards, um, it's just much less likely that someone has like a set or two pair, like three, four. Okay. Certainly three, four, um, is in his defend range, but, um, things like queen Jack are also in his defend range. Uh, king, king Jack, um, and some other hands as you'll, you'll see in this hand. So, um, because we just played with this guy and he's shown that he's going to make these crazy plays. Um, what I did was I took the top of my range. And I started overbetting with it to make it look like I was like being emotionally reactive to him. Um, I was just hoping that he would remember our last hand, which it looks like he did, because I'm I overbet, making it look like I have like ace five of spades or something. Um, and then we we just absolutely love to see the check raise. So um, when we're overbetting this flop, um, again, like I said, it's just much less likely that he has a set. Um, Actually, maybe that's not even true because like, okay, how about this? This this is my, this is what I thought. Sets are always possible, but considering our history with this guy um, and the fact that this is a draw heavy board, there's so many things like five, six of spades, seven, five of spades, seven, six of spades, um, ace X of spades, even something like queen jack with the queen of spades. There's just so many hands in his range that are just significantly worse than ours that um, I, I, since this guy was crazy um, and we had history, I thought he had so many continuing hands in his range um, that I thought he was like capable of making a play. So obviously um, we're very happy to see the check raise. Um, and regarding, regarding, regarding what I just said about the set, it is very possible he does have a set, but just, I think it's significantly more likely that we are getting him to overplay a hand um, because of, because of our history. So we're ha very happy to see the check raise. And then we're going to continue our story with saying, um, making it look like we're just trying to bully him with ace six of spades, ace five of spades, uh, ace queen of spades. We're just trying to make it look like we're bullying him. And, um, we're gonna, we're gonna put in the three bet on the flop. So, um, I'm obviously very happy with how this, this hand is going. Um, top pair, top kicker. 
and we're getting this huge pot. Like if you just look at the pot on the flop, it's only 275, but by the time we're going to the turn, we've got we've got uh over 200 big blinds in the middle, which is pretty sweet. So, um as it turns out, uh my man had king 4 of clubs. So, like I said, also when I saw the when I saw the cards turn over and he just turned to king, I just wanted to like cry uh because I'd been running a little bit bad lately. <laughs> and but we did we did get the jack and then we had the clean run out on the second board. But um, you know, that that point aside, um all all the things I said ended up being true. I overbet the flop because I thought this guy would uh, you know, over consider overplaying a hand because of our history. I ended up being right and we got an absolutely massive pot. So, um I'm I'm going to kick it back to just the regular screen here. So, um, you know, what is there to take away from this? Basically, what I would say is, um, you know, my, my, the way I look at poker is that so much of it is just playing the leveling game. Like, I know that a lot of people, as they get to, like, higher stakes, kind of preach against leveling. Like, I, I know, like, one guy, Alvin, teaches poker. Like, I remember watching his videos, and he's like, oh, I just avoid the leveling game altogether, but... Um, I don't know. The thing, the thing that's always made me money in poker is leveling people and like outsmarting them in that regard. And so if you also feel like you have that edge, um, absolutely go for it. Um, you know, th it's what makes me money, like I said, and, um, it's what made me win that giant ace jack hand. So, um, you know, this has been my hand review. I hope you guys uh, got some value, got some good ideas on how to beat your games. Um, the last thing is if you want some free resources, I've got a cheat sheet for beating the micros uh, down below, as well as uh, other relevant links if you wanted to support the channel. No pressure, just letting you know they're there. So uh, that's going to do it. Happy holidays to everybody, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.